Chris, thank you very much. And again, welcome everyone. We are live from San Diego. Okay. That's good. Made it. <laughs> That's good. And, uh, and congratulations, by the way, on your appointment to the CIO at TSA. It feels great to just say that. It really does. So it feels great to hear you say it. <laughs> super proud of you. Uh, well, let's get started here. Um, I thought it would be important. I know a lot of folks know Yemi, um, but uh, I thought it would be important for you, Yemi, to just uh, give us a little bit of history of, uh, you know, your your background and uh, sort of what got you to this point, you know, a little bit of your professional uh, bio, if you will, yeah. right? Just, uh, and then uh, get us to this day. Yeah, yeah, I will start. Um... At the beginning, where did you start? Where yeah. was your first first job? First job had nothing to do with IT, to be honest. With you. I thought Not I was going to be a sports guy. I worked for uh, Sports Illustrated for a little bit, and that was going to be my trajectory. I was going to meet all the stars and be somewhere on a basketball court. Announcing, but that didn't work out. <laughs> then, um, you know, my second job was actually for EDS, and I was a help desk for immigration with a system called the folks here out there in the system called Breakfast that tracked uh, the A files through all the different offices. Mm -hmm. And so I started there in a help desk, uh, moved up to reporting, you know, you have a reporting czar where you help build reports. And then I, I touched every facet of IT through EDS for the next couple of years. And then I took a break, went out, started my own business for a little while. Oh, wow. uh, okay. Did that for about four or five years, did a little bit of IT, did a little real estate. And then uh, 2012 uh, started the journey where I came to USCIS as a Fed. And that's where I met uh, Mark Schwartz and Keisha Jones. And, we took on the task of bringing Agile and uh, Cloud over to USCIS. Mm -hmm. uh, so that journey actually had a stint outside. Uh, I see Ryan Madden on where I was with Dev Technology for a little while. Mm -hmm. Worked in the private sector and then uh, came to USCIS as a Dev uh, So you know, the rest is, is history. I think for the most part, I have had an opportunity to do software development, to do infrastructure, uh, to do security, to do testing. So I've kind of touched IT in every uh, facet and region that came to today. Sitting right here at TSA. Interesting. Uh, a little bit of zigzag, which is yeah. pretty typical, yeah. right? But a lot of uh, origin and lineage uh, back in the good old immigration days, which is interesting. Absolutely. Did not know that. So I uh, uh, wanted to ask you about sort of your first observation, right? You've been here for 60 days, right? Uh, I guess you found the bathroom in the conference room, <laughs> so to speak, as I like to say. And uh, just what your What's your first impression so far? Well, it's a big building. I've only found a bathroom that comes in my third. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hear it's a beautiful building, and I hear it's empty. But, oh, it's you know, it's a whole building. other subject. No, that's no, a great building. Yeah. I uh -huh. can tell you, observation one of the biggest observations is that uh, IT at TSA is, is vast. And, you know, when you look at IT, a lot of us think about, you know, we think about cloud, we think about workstations, you know, we think about software. But where TSA is different is looking at uh, operational technology and how that in, integrates with. IT. Uh, also looking at uh, industry, not just industry as we work with industry, but transportation industry, aviation industry, the, the folks that work in between the airport and the airline that, that have supply chains. And it, it's such a vast mission that there's so many components to it. And IT weaves in and out. Right now we're working on cyber, not just internal, but external. And how we look at that and what's our responsibility. So TSA is, is I mean, when you say it's a large mission, it's not you don't take that lightly. It's a very long. Question. Right. And people design. often think about the airports and the officers in the airports, and it's much bigger than that. We might expand on that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about the administrator's intent, which I always thought was a sort of a, <laughs> uh, a, a full statement. It's a well written document there. And, uh, you know, how does that conversation go with the administrator? Uh, when you onboard? And what does the administrator, quite frankly, say, hey, these are the things that we need to make sure we hit? Now we got the intent out there. I'm sure there was another conversation with you, yeah. a little bit more fine grained. Yeah, sure. Uh, one of the things that the administrator talked about is really looking at cyber, uh, defining what cybersecurity is. And when you look at cyber, when we, cyber, you know, hashtag IT, because a lot of folks say cyber and mean it to be security, but cyber for us is different because when we start connecting operational technology, let me just define it a little bit. If, when you're going through the airports and your bag gets scanned, that's operational technology. So how we connect those, how we monitor those, that's something we really look at. And then how do we lean into innovation? How does that innovation start from internal and cascade out external? And that's help lead innovation across the center. That's one thing 
I mean, the administrator is very impressive, smart guy, really wants us to all look at how, how an innovative culture will move forward. And then second to that is, is how do we look at cybersecurity on both sides, internal and external? And what does it mean for us to be able to say, we can help protect the security of transportation because cyber is starting to be a larger part of it. Uh, if someone is gonna attack one of our transportation modes, they're gonna do it probably electronically first. So how do we protect that, which then protects our physical aspects? So, so one of the things he said, he said, take a look at that, come back and let's see how we approach that. I'm curious, uh, I'll never forget somebody telling me uh, when they were over at the State Department as a CIO, Hillary Clinton was pointed over there and she was getting all these folks fussing at her about the mobile technology and turned around to the CIO and the onboard and said, would you please get this damn mobile technology solved? I'm just curious if there's been any of those type of conversations. Well, we have been talking about that. So the complexity is mobile or yeah, whatever. I think, yeah. I think it's mobile is one of them. Yeah. So, so if you're looking at an airport, uh, what you need to understand is an airport is, is an integration hub. So you have the city, you have the government, and then you have airlines. So all of us are coming in with different networks, different needs. So the question is, how do we use mobile for our, our TSOs to operate? How do we use mobile to help uh, passengers? So where we're starting is through security. Uh, for those of you that live in Maryland and uh, Arizona, you can actually take your phone, go to BWI or DCA, and if you have a mobile driver's license, you can use that, and you don't have to pull out uh, your, uh, your driver's license. It's all digital. And I have it because I live in Maryland. So I can just walk in. It's about five minutes quicker than it is if you're doing everything. So those, that's one thing. So that's sort of that touchless yep. uh, airport experience that we're hearing about? Absolutely. It works quite well. I'm a, I'm a customer and part of the team. Building. Sure. And, yeah. and uh, look, we're all customers as we get on these aircraft, yeah. et cetera. Let's talk about aircraft versus some of these other modes of transportation, et cetera. Um, uh, we touched on it a little bit, but I want you to broad, you know, yeah. give us the footprint of what TSA is responsible for and therefore what you find yourself sort of uh, dealing with in regards to support, because I know it's vast. It, it is vast. So uh, when we say aviation, uh, aviation goes anywhere from the actual plane uh, to the crew working on the plane, to the crew working in the airport, to the passengers coming in out of out of the airport. Now we're looking at how the airlines and oh, oh by the way, supply chain. So our reservation system is also part of the supply chain mm -hmm. into that connectivity, into that ecosystem. And that's just aviation. You're looking at rail, you're looking at pipeline, you're also looking at um, metro system plus local transportation like your, you know, your WMTA, things like that. Trying to make sure that as passengers travel and as cargo travels, they're traveling secure. So, um... You say rail, that makes sense, right? Then you say pipeline. Where does pipeline fit into that versus, okay, are you dealing with the electrical grid too? And where does it end? Kind of thing. Are you dealing with all the critical infrastructure sectors, right? You yeah. wonder about that. Yeah, so, yeah. I think, I think that question will come up a lot. Um, part of that discussion is, you know, transportation is taking something from one place to another. Right, right. And so um, pipeline is taking a natural resource from one place to another. Mm -hmm. It happens to be one of the unique modes where there's critical infrastructure that's used to transport something from one place to another, different than putting a package on a plane. I mean, even though that's part of transportation too, the package itself is not the same as the pipeline. So the pipeline is part of critical infrastructure. It, it, it does operate like a transportation system. So that's, that's a place that we uh, find ourselves getting involved. Uh, so deep into the critical infrastructure space, which is very interesting. You talked about this touchless experience. I know there's some TF, TMF funding allocation out there, I think, for this very project. I don't know where it is in the cycle. Have you all formally asked for it? Have you received it? We're in the process. Okay. Yeah, we're in the process of asking. Okay. So, so it might take a little while. Oh, it does. Okay. So funding in, re in regards to expanding that touchless uh, uh, and I would guess that those two airports that we're describing, pilot airports? Yes. Full production at this point? Uh, it's actually full production. So okay. I, I traveled to Dallas uh, about two weeks ago uh -huh. and I walked into Dallas. I had my mobile driver's <coughs> license and I just, I have also have pre checks. So I just walked up, flashed my phone, and I have an older phone. So don't laugh, but I have an older phone. So right. I still have the phone. You have to put your thumb on. I didn't put my thumb on. That's the only thing that slowed it down. But it, it takes 
it's almost instantaneous that it registers your driver's license and it also registers your uh, your uh, your uh, your flight information. So you're allowed to walk through as oh, soon nice. as it registers. That's what all you great, need to do. What a yeah. great experience. Now you're down in Dallas, you're at the airport. What'd you say? Anything uh, cool? I actually got to see something pretty cool. So I got to stand in between two different conveyor belts where they're checking you in and watching the bags go through an older system and a newer system. Where we're looking and comparing how easy it was to take the older bag check system, the newer bag check system, check bags and what you can see. So that, that was pretty cool to see how it and a lot of um, uh, machinery behind the scenes there. I was blown away when I went behind the scenes <laughs> at an airport and yeah. saw all that baggage uh, scanning equipment, et cetera. It was very impressive. Uh, speaking of which, so you touched on this a little bit regarding uh, operational technology, et cetera. What's the role of the CTO at TSA? What's the role of the CIO? Do they, uh, does, does the CI, CTO work for the CIO? Are they in peer? And how does that work? Because that's always been a, an area of question mark for a lot of folks. Well, TSA being, because there's different technology, there's actually history with the CTO. So there was yes. a CTO at one point. A CTO mm -hmm. wasn't in the CIO organization. Right. And currently, as we sit today, there is not a CTO. Okay. So right now, there's myself as that. a CIO. Okay. Uh, there's an organization called RCA, Requirements and Capabilities. And what they do is they take the requirements and capabilities and we actually test out the requirements. So you'll see that team take um, scanning machines, mobile technology that scans identity, mobile technology that scans bags, and test that out. And they're really testing it. And where we get involved is make sure you have a backbone on the network, and there's security, we test the security, and we make sure that the technology is So we, we work hand in hand. Right. I, I recall there was somebody that actually um, worked in the CIO shop in the CTO once upon a time yeah. uh, back in the day. So I guess you're in the process of hiring a CTO. We're in the process of looking at what a CTO is today and, and where that CTO should be. So okay. with operational technology, we also have a need to build out uh, our cloud. We also have a need to connect operational technology, information technology, and really expand a lot of innovation. So we're talking through internally what that would look like Right, because there's an incredible amount of technology on the floor in these airports alone, Absolutely. right? And trying to get the connectivity together. It's not just a, uh, not just, but a bunch of desktops and right. mobile devices, right? You have these huge scanners, yeah. et cetera. I mean, that's always been a, a big challenge there. Um, um, it sounds like, from what I can tell, the majority of the, let's call it pure traditional IT mainstream functions are inside of uh, the CIO, under the CIO's yes. jurisdiction. Is yes. that right? I know the air march with some of these other things were kind of scattered about there, uh, so to speak, not scattered about, right. but uh, running autonomously. All that's pulled under the CIO's organization well, for the most part? For the, yeah, when you say pulled under. So um, for IT, if you're going to deploy or develop something, you know, you're running through an ITAR process that we see everything. Sure. There are program managers that are not in IT that manage the delivery of it, but we're still. Mm -hmm. And what we're looking at now is how do we, how do we enable folks to continue that, and have IT still involved? Because as large as TSA is, it, it may not be reasonable to say everything just sits under IT because all we're doing yes. is moving bodies. And money. So right. right now is how does that ecosystem work well? Stay innovative. We, we're pressing towards the similar version of Agile. Uh, we're pressing towards being able to use the same platforms and still federate and democratize uh, how we do it. So um, a little bit of a, a different type of question, but we talked about the conversation that you had with the administrator, right? And then um, no doubt you've had conversations with your peers. Mm -hmm. and no doubt you've had conversations with your employees, you know? <laughs> and sometimes those things sort of line up and sometimes yeah. they're still like, wait a minute, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, just tell us about those conversations. Yeah. What's your observation from the feedback? I know you're in sort of learning mode yeah. right now. You're, you're out there in the field uh, discovering and, and observing a lot of stuff on the ground, which is awesome. Yeah. You're going to take a big tour yeah. of the yeah. airport here in yeah. a moment, which will be awesome. Um, but you're also reaching out to your peers. Yeah. Obviously, you're talking to your employees. What do you hear? I mean, the biggest feedback I get is how invested folks are. I, I, I'm amazed at how many folks have been there to so you know it's a, it's a passionate group of folks. 
uh, they talk a lot about, the team talks a lot about, you know, where we're going together uh, in the next phase of the technology. What does it mean to have a secure system that finally touches aviation, rail, and flight? What does that really mean? What does that look like? Uh, and then it's really about how do we empower uh, our business, our mission partners to do certain things like, you know, we're going to start inspecting uh, different modes of transportation. Does that cyber professional work for the CIO or is that cyber professional kind of knighted by the CIO to do something and just comes back to the community? You know, what, what is our communication structure and how do we organize around IT? Because TSA, like everybody else, IT is going to be the bread and butter of everybody. So, so you have to figure out how you communicate, collaborate, and, and really make sure things are done properly. What, what's our, what's our, uh, you know, our, our ten commandments? Of how we initiate. So, how about your, we'll call them your management uh, peers. Let's say procurement, CFO. You know, a lot of times when you, you're talking to CFO, oh, you know, the CIO, you know, they still can't count. They come <laughs> over here and. They can't tell me how much their cost is. They can tell me what their budget yeah. is. They can't tell me what their cost is. How are those conversations going? And uh, as you're working with Bill, for example, yeah. and head of procurement, et cetera. Yeah. They're going well. So I know that with IT, it's always hard to understand what we're buying and how much a unit costs. Uh, good thing my last three and a half years over at CIS, I was dedicated toward the budget and procurement. Yeah. So coming over here, I speak that now. So it's been pretty easy to be able to have a conversation around you know, what, it, what are the needs that we haven't funded? How do we fund them and why do we fund them? And we're working hard on translating those to the audience. That we have. So when it goes to the CFO, we're talking, you know, budget line items and PPA. When it's going over to the mission side, we're talking about what piece of the mission it, it enhances and supports. If you don't do this, what piece of the mission can't get done? Uh, and, and so we're, those conversations are going very well, completely welcoming. Uh, any challenges have, we've been working it in, collaboration so i've been pretty uh pretty encouraged by a lot of conversations. i know yeah and I, russ often talked about the uh the, the stress on the budget right mm -hmm. and he was pretty vocal about that publicly that uh you know there's a there's a lot of stressors on the budget and, and that's a, a reasonable type of situation is most of the it budget sort of the, again traditional pure it is most of that under the cio's organization or is it you know, a lot of pockets, or you're still trying to figure that out right now? Uh, it's a little bit of everything. So most uh -huh. most of it that I've seen, I would say most, you say, like, let's throw out a number like 60 bucks. Most of it is uh, all the infrastructure, all the network is under your IT. Uh, software development, you'll get pockets here there because mission is driving software development. So okay. that's probably 50-50, where there's 50 out the mission. 50 oh, out. really? Yeah, that it, yeah okay. it, it's a good deal. All right. And then and in the operation technology, because those are you know, big uh, acquisition lifecycle framework uh, programs, we have something called um, APM, program management, acquisition program management. Sure. That group actually runs those. Different. And then there's IT embedded. So, right. Yeah. And I and I would kind of expect that. I yeah. didn't, didn't quite expect to hear the uh, that maybe half the software development or so. So is that like, and, and what would that be? Is that like secure flight stuff? Secure or flights is that, with us. Uh, is, so some of the HR is not, but okay. when I say it's not, Part of the way we work is, is, is in collaboration. So you'll have mission will pay. Mission will have someone that, let's call them a product owner. They're not yeah. using that term as much uh -huh. now. Yeah. But you always have an IT person that liaises. So it's not like it's out of touch for us. Of it, course. It, it's of it's course. that it's being mostly done there and pay for there. We're helping guide through the process. We do use an SDLC. We, we ATL everything. So it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration. Right. What we're so, looking at, what does it look like if some of that, let's say we built a software. What does it look uh -huh. like if everything ran through the software? That's part of the discussion. Well, first of all, thanks for putting this on. I really appreciate it. And uh, congratulations again, Yemi. Well deserved. Thank you. <laughs> so my question is really around cloud. And I know the different components are different areas of maturity around cloud adoption. And you know that better than anybody. Uh, but how are you? starting to look at that if you've even had a second to think about it yet. I know it's still very new, but um, in terms of different data centers where TSA is doing work and, and different you know, uh, cloud environments and where you see that going forward. So, so we're definitely pressing in, into cloud. 
uh, what we're looking at all kind of simultaneously is looking at, you know, multi-cloud. So how do we, what assets do we put in which cloud? And then as we're putting them in the cloud, you know, we, we want to make sure that we walk in doing cloud native systems and if we're migrating, we're migrating and adapting to the cloud. Uh, yeah. So the pipeline has been part of our, our biggest conversation. What are the tools in the pipeline? How do we operate those tools? So there's an effort looking at cloud and what are our, you know, low hanging fruit quick wins. Uh, we actually just deployed something in Azure. Uh, I want to say, oh, actually it's coming in the next week. It's going to be deploying into Azure. And then Great. what does it look like? Uh, because we also have an AWS environment. What does it look like if we're starting to deploy into those two different environments? Can we have a similar pipeline that makes sure it's automated from end to end? Because we're going to do it. You want to minimize as much of the manual input as you can. So, uh, you know, that conversation came up really, really early as I got there. And it's been a, a ongoing conversation. We even have a, a small community of practice within IT that we're pulling other folks into now. So if anything comes in new, you know, it's cloud first for us, right? Yeah. I remember from past history, there's a, um, you guys have a pretty complex environment, right? You've got some of this stuff in the cloud, right? Uh, you had some, I think, in, and I'll call it sort of more of a, a vendor cloud type situation. Mm -hmm. I think of some of your HR stuff. Mm -hmm. Big user of the, uh, the headquarters data center mm -hmm. uh, uh, environment, right? Which I think you've moved most of that stuff out of there, if I recall, or uh, a lot of it in, in the data center too. I see some yeses and some no's there. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll let you guys explain. Yeah. I'm just trying to observe here. But then you also have Annapolis Junction mm -hmm. and, and sort mm -hmm. of, so you have a lot of hardcore, heavy duty, high value assets on prem, right? So you have a sort of a, uh, a, a, a true hybrid, if you will, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a unique kind of way. Any observations of that or what's your thought process there? What's sort of the long-term plan or, or is everything, hey, look, things happen certain kinds of ways for various reasons and we're okay with the way things are right well it's gonna be form fit so you know our environment will be probably use a little bit of everything so similar to most other areas where you have something that's pretty secure and and the data you don't want right now to go into public cloud mm -hmm. uh we'll use dc 1.dc3 dc15 DC now we'll, we'll start to leverage equinix okay uh, for that right, right, right. because you get to you get to have your own cage uh, a lot of that networking gear is still in DC1 because we're all going through uh, HSN, HSIN. Yeah. Say it right. HSIN mm -hmm. now that we're running through. So we're still going to use those assets. But for the most part, if we want to have something <laughs> that's quick to impact, uh, we want to go through either we're going to use SAS, PASS, or that, that That's that's where the focus is. But things that we know, you know, right now, if it needs to be encrypted at rest and we're not ready to do that in the public cloud, we can use, uh, we can put a cage in there. So we have okay. options across areas. So the goal is to have, you know, robustness and communication and speed it. So you you really do have some some bench ready kind of solution threads. You talked about SaaS, PaaS, et cetera. So tell us a little bit about sort of where you all are on that journey. I know you are big SaaS users, if I remember right, you pick some platforms, et cetera. How's all that going? What's your observation so far? Yeah, so we have a we have a good sized footprint in uh, Salesforce right now. Uh, okay. We have uh, also a footprint in ServiceNow. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, from a SaaS pass environment, we have 365. I mean, that's bread and butter, right? So everyone yeah. has that. But mm -hmm. we're looking to leverage that a little bit more on the Power App side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you know most folks use the productivity. We're trying to see what happens if we lean into the Power Apps. Uh, let's use Power BI a little more and make that kind of our our standard for business intelligence. Uh, so we'll use that ecosystem. And, and as new things come up, the question is, to, can it go into SaaS or PaaS really easily? If not, then what do we do with our architecture and, and where does it lie? Up? Does that potentially sort of your first port versus the organic build, or is it just uh, it you know just going to depend on yeah. sort of the, uh, the 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 need of right. one versus the other? We want to. Are you all doing any organic build these days? Uh, we are doing some organic builds. They're okay. they're newer. So, so there's things that we're starting now. Uh, matter of fact, there's an organic build going on now, uh, and it's really in a concept. So there's there's no code. This is really, what is it that you want to do? We're working with fantasy. Is there something that you want to need? How can we respond? To it? And we try not to pick the platform. We want the, the the requirement to help us. It drives us, and we find what the design is. Then we figure out what platform the line is. I think secure flight is kind of a 
ultimately an organic build, right? It's a Lego blocks kind of right. That's the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, but it is organic. It has, but it isn't yeah. sitting on a platform. No. that's you know. And the cool thing about that is that there are federal developers that we have. Really? Yeah, actual federal developers. Wow. Yeah. So that's I get the impressive. call back at uh, Bill Macklin and say, "You're not the only one." <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here. We got a question <laughs> up here. I'm not sure, Chris, who that came from, but uh, what do we have here? What are your thoughts on accelerating digital transformation strategies as a shared service, ready-made solution, common need for the digital workflows, e.g., data analytics across functional enclaves like industry airlines, interface with TSA? I'm not sure if they can see that question as on. on, on uh, reading it out here but i know that uh yes, yeah. yeah me can so uh yeah spin that record back yeah. Me what it says. yeah well let me let me unpack it a little bit so yeah. uh digital transformation for tsa uh comes in a very different you know information is really the staple of it right so because we're securing modes of transportation uh you know information and, and analysis uh intelligence uh data is something that we're going to use a lot of Sharing that data is tricky because there are many different levels that will share that data. So I think it's more about integration than it is about a single platform. And because there's so many areas where data comes from. So if you think about, um, I mean, let's use an example, the pipeline, right? So we have the pipeline breach. The pipeline exists in a municipality. Uh, the pipeline communicates with different vendors and suppliers, some that are small business. You know, our focus is getting that data to the right person in the right place quickly more than it is about having platform. Um, you know, shared service, I, I think that depends. Today, again, it's all about trying to make sure we collaborate with multiple entities really fast, really quickly, and have the same uh, objective when we do it. So, so speed to security is what we need. Uh, so we probably won't look, you know, platforms and shared services won't be the first thing we look at. Uh, but common digital workflows make sense. Uh, Using data analytics across the different enclaves makes sense, but they could be initiated on different platforms in different places. Like, for example, if I'm sharing it with an airline, the airlines are extremely immature. Uh, you know, we're not going to force them to work on our platform or use our service. We just need to find a way to integrate and share information. And, and so, a lot of API type play there yeah. more than that. But, and that's the easy part. Everyone's using it. Let me spin it around uh, again, talking to your peers, you're talking to your operators, you know, what, what's the sort of top ask? Them? Hey, want more faster? You know, what, yeah. what, what is it? Is there a common theme out there besides the obvious one more, right, more that every faster. CIO gets asked? Yeah, give me my ATO in a day, want more faster. I think that's what, what I hear a lot of. Uh, so being that security is in the name of, of the component, we take it very seriously, but at the same time, we're trying to, we're trying to measure speed to, to uh, production, as well as making sure we have the most secure system. Because we have so many things that connect into it, uh, sometimes we take an extra step to look at it, but we're looking at automating a lot of those areas when it comes to doing a, uh, authorization and accreditation. Uh -huh. uh, we're looking at increasing monitoring where it's, it covers our environment, but might extend it in your extreme environment. So can I monitor the edge of where my system meets the airport system? If we have the scanning system, they sit on top of the airport. So if someone comes into the airport network, between our two socks, where do the, where do the, where do the eyes meet? And are there any gaps in, the, in our visibility? So those are some of the things that I hear from folks are. And then the, the thing that's really top of mind now is if we're looking at cyber across industries, what does that really mean? Uh, so not a lot of folks may know, but the airline industry is governed by DOD and FAA. So if we're also going to start to govern, how does that ecosystem look? Uh, and how do we focus on gas as opposed to having too many overheads? So those are the kind of things we're talking about. Yeah, so uh, uh, want it sooner, want it faster, want more of it, that type of thing. TSA always been a uh, very uh, uh, well-known traditionally having a very tight security uh, system, having a, a very tight security program, uh, and, and good catch on, it's, it's in the name. Um, uh, and uh, and of course, w w when you're doing that, you know, ATO in a day, uh, you know, maybe isn't in the genre, right? So uh, I totally get that. But it looks like you're trying to automate that, make that better. Mm -hmm. 
How about uh, when you're talking to the employees? Uh, you know, what are those conversations going like in, in, in regards to? I also want to talk about onboarding employees and how, mm -hmm. how's that sort of, how well does that work? I mean, I would expect that TSA being a very attractive place to work. I'm just curious to know how that's, how's that going? Let's start with, as you're talking to the employees, what sort of basic observation you get? Uh, good perception. You know, I kind of continue the tradition at Russ. Russ is really good with the employees, continue that tradition. I've already had a couple all hands. Uh, good reception at one all hands where most of them talk about chip legs. So that was, that was <laughs> okay. we're, we're really getting to know folks and, and, and getting feedback. So, you know, I have a, an open door policy where I want to make sure that whoever you are, wherever you work in our organization, you can be able to get feedback. And we're doing that with all of TSA. So if there's feedback from one of the other areas that are not IT, um, we want to hear how, how can we help you do better? So I've gotten a lot of warm reception, open conversations there, and, and that's been really good. As far as kind of onboarding, I will tell you, like I said, folks who've been in TSA for quite some time, uh, turnover is low. Uh, so we're looking at the folks that we have there, and as we're doing new things, how can we help enhance the skill sets of the current employees? Uh -huh. And for employees that want to learn something different and want to change the deck chairs a little bit, what can we do there? Um, how do we do cross uh, training for folks in other areas? So, um, I mean, there are definitely people knocking on the door. I get calls all the time. Hey, if you need help, give me a call. But um, I can tell you, we have dedicated employees. So as much as we'll be recruiting and pulling folks in, uh, there are a lot of folks that want to stay. Sure, sure. And the process to bring them on board sounds like it's reasonable. It isn't, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, let's talk about uh, infrastructure. You know, what, what's your first impression of sort of your infrastructure environment and your ability to deploy technical debt, all this? Solid. What little do you know? Yes. Yeah, right? like, I, I dove in. Actually, we had an uh, ATO meeting, and one of the staff, one of the technical staff that actually is hands on, started talking about our, our, our uh, on the prem environment. I mean, he talked about everything from the switch to the server to the memory. I mean, so we have very talented. So one thing is great. What I've been impressed about is folks that manage the on-prem, how quickly they're able to understand the cloud, and how quickly they're able to make the, the leap of, if I put something in the cloud, here's what has to change. Uh, so I think we have a very good handle on that. I will tell you- um, Same like, group of folks that are going to be do, that are doing both? A, a mix. They're, they're, they're cloud of, folks and on-prem folks, yeah. but, but they, they're, their cross-pollination uh -huh. is really good. Okay. It's very, very good. So I, I've definitely been impressed about that. What we're looking at too is, how can we do some of the things that we're doing at, uh, on prem? So, what happens if we put a Kubernetes platform on prem and in cloud, so that you know we True can hybrid play. There you go, portable yeah. portable application. So, uh -huh. at some point, does it really matter? It's all about the cost, right? So, if I if I have a cheaper environment in my on prem environment, Equinix, sure I can do it. If it gets cheaper in the cloud, then I can just move. So those make it less affordable. expensive. We don't do anything cheap. Hey, hey, hey. Less expensive. <laughs> I can All dream. Right. We, got a, we got a question here. Yes, CMD has been well received by our IT staff in the passion drink. Okay, this is from one of your employees. Hey, All right. There you go. Appreciate it. Shout out to Brian. <laughs> um, all right, same question yeah. for security. Observations there. Oh, wait, we have another one here. Yeah, we have talked primarily about airports. Yeah. Can you address? non-airport activities that are in overlap correct collaboration with CISA. Yeah, we haven't gotten into the zero trust or getting ready to, to ask that, but yeah, here you go. Yeah, I, I, can, question. I can tell you, so the way it works, we're primarily uh, and heavily invested in, in aviation. So our regulation authority is a lot more expensive when it comes to aviation. Uh, so when we look at rail and the other modes of transportation, you'll see, we, we do inspect rail uh, but you'll see in the, the uh, subways and the buses, you won't see as much involvement. So there's where the overlap with CISA comes in. Uh, so CISA has a lot of uh, regulations and uh, directives that are already out. What we'll, we do is piggyback on them and look at where the gaps are. Uh, so when it gets down to the mode of transportation and not just critical infrastructure, that's when TSA comes into play. And so we work hand in hand. Matter of fact, as we're putting out our security directives, we're working with CISA. So that you know, there's consistency as DHS comes out and tells them. You know, our so there's a lot of input from TSA when those are being uh, issued out by CISA. Interesting. 
So give us a uh, an assessment of your security and let's talk about zero trust architecture and sort of where you are on that whole journey. So our security environment, I can tell you that security here is taken very seriously. Uh, you know, always has. Always has. Always has been. Very, very, very yep. tight on that. Uh, we have a really solid zero trust plan uh, working, first working heavily on identity. Uh, when it's coming to the network segmentation, we're looking at doing IP. Six and the network segmentation around the same time. For folks that are familiar, you know that's going to be a heavy, heavy lift. Uh, but one of the things we're trying to do is run a couple pilots first to see what the impacts are, uh, see which systems will uh, accommodate that easier, and then build out the <laughs> segments. But uh, really solid plan here. Uh, some of it is going to be investment based, so we are asking for a little more money in, in uh, 23 and 24 to be able to uh, deliver on that. But uh, solid, definitely a solid. And very very impressive security. And as far as you know, the the, the ability to to do data security and data is, uh, encryption at rest, et cetera. So where are you on that whole journey? And I, I know the the ZTA is always a journey, yes, right? Journey. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, how's that rollout going in regards to your ability to implement some of these broader initiatives? Yeah, we're doing a piece by piece. I, I would say. Uh, so like we talked about SAS, uh, we already have in our SAS environment uh, our encryption at rest. So I've seen SAS all over the government. There are very few that implement encryption at rest. So I was impressed that that's done there. Uh, we've been taking the identity portion and looking really closely at that. You know, how do we take each system? You know, having a multi-factor authentication for everything. You know, to make sure that we're managing identity. What are we going to do when we roll out uh, AD with our new uh, uh, our new environment. And so looking at those things and testing them out has been really the way uh, we're doing them in phases. And in 23, we have a, a pretty decent pilot that we're going to do. And once that works, we'll roll everything out throughout 24. But like I said, it's a journey. You, you can't do it at one time uh, because, it's, I mean, most places not possible. Yeah, and, and nobody can afford it. But the right. reality is just the, the, the horsepower to implement all that. One of the things I, I, I was... Uh, interviewing uh, the CIO at uh, it was the Army Corps of Engineers, and he was talking about the culture program, mm -hmm. the ZTA, and, and, and just the adoption rate uh, yeah. from, from just a pure culture standpoint, not just with the sort of security employees, but all the other work that has to be done around the ecosystem, uh, the operators, et cetera, which I yeah. thought was really interesting. That. How about, same question, software development? Sort of, what's your sort of assessment of your software development? I will say, so cyber is is really the hotter ticket here than software development. Uh, so you'll see uh, more platform development and SaaS development here, where software development comes in uh, is where we're. When I say software, just everything. Just, yeah, let's just say yeah. business applications. Okay. Okay. Right? Yeah. You know, just whatever it is, whether you use a, a low code, no code. Yeah. Or you're doing sort of organic, you know, open source builds. So, what, what's your assessment of, of what you're dealing with? At this point? Yeah, I would think I'd come, I've come where we're in an incline on, on the curve of software development. You know, there are so many solutions out there that have been around for a while where everything's looking for an upgrade, where everything's looking for something new, or if we've done something manually, it's really the time now. Like you said before, it's what we're really looking at is do we have the funding to do it? So, we have this uh, system, it's also in Salesforce that we use it track all the IT requests. I mean, there, I was talking with uh, Robert Deppy yesterday. There are so many, it's hard to keep up. So everybody wants something that has a software solution. The mm -hmm. question now is how do we keep up with the business demand and the business agility? Um, and maybe I'm getting too far into yeah. the, uh, the, the business of, of, of TSA or CIO, but I'm curious to know how much of that is funded by the operators, right? When I was at ICE, uh, we got to a point where probably 80% of the uh, DME kind of software bill was actually coming from the hours. Hey, I'm happy to do it, <laughs> but you got to pay for it, right? You got you yeah. to give me the money. I'll build it for you, but I need the money to do yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, it's not 80%. I mean, it's probably somewhere between 50, 50, 50, 60, 40. So you yeah. have a fund to, we do uh, have. Yeah. Okay, to, to do some of that. It's just a matter of sort of managing and organizing that, I would imagine. So, well, yeah, they did a smart thing here at TSA a couple years ago with the FAST contract. So 
the, the contract is an IT contract. So okay. if someone on the business side wants to build something, they fund the IT contract. What happens is even if you have a PM on the business side, it's coming from IT. The contract says, you know, what the tech stack can use, how you're going to do it, how you buy by this grant. So that allows us to have some, some governance play in there. So even if the money's coming from the business, it's going through IT to get it developed. Sure, they're cutting an order on fast. Exactly. And then at that point, the rest of the apparatus, sort of the right. ecosystem, the governance, the checks and balances. Uh, same question on procurement uh, from, from just uh, the ability to acquire goods and services and do it rapidly or, you know, including things like, hey, we have, we've got fast, we've got all these guerrilla contracts out there. and uh, they're all we need to pull in, or is there new things, or you know, just observations around that? So far, it's been been uh, sufficient. I, I can tell you, fast. I, I'm impressed with how fast works because you're able to say, "I want something new, and I want to be able to 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 procure that here, and I can do it quickly." Uh, you know, I, I probably need to sit around a little longer to see how our move into cloud will be with the current contracts we have in play. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, I don't see any barrier. We're moving pretty fast without having to stop. Uh, so, but I, I probably need a little more time to get a full analysis. So of let's talk barriers. That was one of my questions. So what, what do you see? Obviously funding is yeah. always fun, yeah. right? The only things can, can get throttled in regards to how much funding is available. But sometimes, you know, you, you get a hundred million dollars and then you can't execute <laughs> it, right? Because that's not what are yeah. people or the contracts to do it, et cetera. I think fast, if I remember right, isn't that towards the tail end right now? It, it is. We're going to have to re up it, It's not that? all the same time. We're going to have to do some re okay. some You heard it here first. <laughs> um, but barriers, let's talk about barriers. So, I, so what, what are sort of the barriers for you all to sort of go go, if you will? What are sort of the general ones besides? Yeah, to, to one of the questions earlier, I think what we're looking at now is how do we start to homogenize some of the tech staff? Because when you're developing an every mode and every language uh it slows down security authorization it, it, it kind of hinders our ability to monitor so you know our discussion now that we have internally is what are our core technology stack what's our core platforms that we're going to use and how do we rinse and repeat and help us? And how do we uh the, the term we use shift left how do we start engaging with business farther to the left so that we're designing better together securing better together and we can take that template and just kind of 10x. And, and I would say we're not fully there. We're getting there. We're talking about it. But I think that's a barrier to speed uh, and delivery. Simplify. Yeah. yeah. Simplify. Simplify and start early together. Yeah. And simplify is hard, right? Yeah. It sounds easy and it sounds, obviously, it makes sense. But when you try to start clipping off these environments yeah. and get them down, there's always good reasons as you dig in as to, you know, why secure flight is the way it is versus, you know, HR is the way it is or what have you. Um, we have another question here, which looks like, I don't know if that's an employee or if that's somebody from the outside, uh, but they're asking about reorganization. Apparently, you've done a couple of those in the past, and they're wondering if there's any uh, in the mix here. I know it's early, but uh, I don't know what yeah, you thought I mean, there. I, I'm assuming they're talking about CIO here versus all of TSO. Yeah, so I can tell you my my as I've been a leader, my go-to is not to reorganize. My my go-to is to pay attention. Uh, you know, I've always said uh, in a lot of the organizations I've been in, the boxes and lines are for communication. So if we can matrix and get folks to work, we'll do that first. Where we need to reorganize or, or set up, like for instance, a, a stronger program management organization is something that uh, we've talked about internally. That's building on what we have. But I mean, we, we have great staff and good leaders. It's just getting them to do the things that they see that they can do and moving barriers for them. So, I, you know, my gut doesn't tell me there's going to be a big reorganization. Not in CIO. I yeah. haven't heard anything for the rest of the team. So, yeah. So yeah. that servient leader, you know, yeah. just get the stuff out of the way, let the folks do their job. That's it. Kind of yeah. that is always super important. Um, what other barriers do you have out there that you're sort of thinking about right now? Obviously, you know, double side of the coin, right? So we have a great mission. And when you when you want to go to modernize, you're not going to push things out, you ask yourself which part of the mission should go first. And because we're securing transportation, you know, sometimes you, you hesitate to move out because if we're securing it right now. To secure it, let's not try to change things so fast. Uh, case in point, you know, our biggest thing right now is to reduce, you know, lines in the airport through security checks. 
Right. And and the question is, you know, where do we make that move first? And sometimes the barriers is just really trying to test out where that happens first. And, and, and you know, trading on speed or doing something smart that'll be long lasting. So that can be somewhat of a barrier sometimes. Uh, and also pushing out large systems and not, you know, taking a back seat on whether that system is really secure. And it's, it's that speed versus smart delivery that sometimes holds us. So I can say that that's a barrier. Uh, I mean, other than that, honestly, it's 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 time and money. You know, it's blocking and tackling, yeah, right? It. A lot yeah. of it. We got really smart people. We got vast technology. We have our fingers on. It's it's really you know if, if, if you have more time and money, than you can do. Um, we touched on shared services. What's mm -hmm. your thought on that? What's the sort of going rate on just uh, leveraging shared services? Across the ecosystem, or, or you, guys, you guys aren't completely at this by any means. Mm, no, uh, you've made smart choices along the yeah. way as an as an agency. What, yeah. What's your thought on that? It, it depends. I mean, there's some some um, vehicles we use at a DHS now, uh, and, and like you know, some of our high side obviously for the shared services there it works. Of course, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's you always want to control your own destiny when you want to implement something with speed and has a lot of variability. So, you know, you're trying to look for shared services there. But, you know, honestly, it really depends on the fidelity of the service, uh, you know, how much has been tested, you know, cost is a factor in there as well. And then, you know, what problems, you know, we're open to whatever is the best thing possible. But where we can control our destiny, we're usually going to try to press it. Got to stick with speed of mission, right? That's yeah. super important. Yeah. Let's talk about vendor outreach. How are you doing that? How's that work? Always have a bunch of folks here. Love yeah. to help you, et cetera. What, what's your, let's let's talk about your philosophy first, but then sort of what's the methodology of mm -hmm. GSA? And if that's something you're looking at. Maybe you're going to change that, et cetera. Just thoughts on that whole yeah. uh, vendor interaction. We'll call it vendor outreach, <laughs> whether it's industry day, push pull, you know, all, yeah. the, all the above. It's, it's multi pronged So I've talked to Bill about that as well. Uh, and, you know, they're wide open to the industry days. I mean, TSA has been doing it for a while. Uh, and, and yeah, TSA does a nice job yeah. with their industry days. I always thought they did a really good job. No need to change that. Uh, if there's something specific that we want to do, you know, I've met with the CEOs, I met with um, Bill, uh, HCA. They're open and willing to do it. What I really like about TSA um, chairman's, they, they're looking to be very innovative. They work with the pillow. So, so you'll see a high level of engagement from that team. Uh, you know, for folks that know me, my philosophy, I'm, a, I'm an open book. So if you want to reach out and have time, let's talk. Uh, I make it yeah, I mean, you're out there on the ground, San yeah. Diego, right? You're going to the conference. So yep. very accessible from that standpoint. Yep. How about the rest of the CIO organization? Let's talk about that as far as is the expectation we'll see them out and about. We're going to be seeing them out. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, what you'll see is everyone doesn't come out all the time because of there's course. a lot of work to do, but of uh, we're starting to get out there. Actually, my mobile guy just sent me an email today to get out to one of the conferences. Uh, you know, I have a, a very open policy on get, us getting out there. So for folks that want to get out, you'll see. I think see it's GSA. super important to do that. Let's yeah. see here. Are you scaling up biometrics to speed passenger processing? Uh, how are those programs going? It's a good question, and I wondered about that in regards to the touches experience. I have another question above yeah, it that we'll catch sure. in a minute. But let's start with this one. Are you scaling up biometric? When you talked about the touchless experience, yeah. and you talked about the uh, the uh, the license plate sort of you yeah. know, digitally uh, on your phone, which I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on that yeah, one. I'll, 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 I can show it to you. <laughs> but uh, I'm also wondering about the biometrics part of this thing, as yeah. far as the touchless and retina scans or what have you. So uh, yeah, there's your question. So let me unpack that again. So uh -huh. the 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 mobile the MDL mobile driver license, the way you get that is is you go onto your phone, so it's Samsung and iPhone, uh, and you're able in Maryland to request to have the driver's license on your phone. To do that, they are actually using your biometrics on the phone to validate it as you. And Maryland accepts that the phone, which is a um, from the WC3 credential authority, is a piece that's part that you own. And then your biometrics is what you have. And so they have certified. When you take that and you go to the airport, you scan the driver's license. I mean, it's really, actually, it's not a scan. It's an NFC you touch um, our mm -hmm. chat machine. And then what happens is you look into the camera and it takes your picture. 
So they're using a biometric. It goes out to the authority immediately, validates it's you, and you're walking through. So that's wow. that's the biometrics that we're scaling up to be able to move folks through that. Is the expectation that's going to be in all the major airports? So the airports will do it. It's it's going to be the municipalities and bus. So it's really about the driver's license and how they're working with that. Okay. So they're, my understanding is there are seven more on the list now. Uh, and as they grow, uh, Dallas is starting to, to do it. Uh, and other airports are in line. So they don't have the full published list of all the airports, yep. but I know there are seven more states that are jumping into the mobile truck. Excellent. We have another question here. Are you scaling up? Uh, whoops. What is your thought for moving TSA more robustly to DevSecOps or SecDevOps, depending on who yeah. you're talking to, and integrating O&M with the Dev team? So, and that's what I talked about the pipelines as we're moving the cloud, we're doing it simultaneously. So the pipelines, DevSecOps it, it is very important. Now, when you're saying DevSecOps and O&M, everyone sees that differently. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be looking at pure DevOps as we move forward. If, you know, in some cases, like on the fast, when you build it, do you really own it? Because some of that is contractual and not just uh, pure DevOps. Because if in the contract it says O&M is somewhere else, O&M must be somewhere else, you have to figure out how to do it. But the more we automate, easier it is to do. So if, if a team puts code in an environment, it's coming out of the same Git repo, it's running through the same pipeline, then honestly, it doesn't matter as long as, just as, long as you're doing a good job and, and you're supporting the system. The way it is. And so, yes, we're moving to DevOps, DevSecOps, SecDevOps, whatever you want to call it. We're moving to that heavily because that's going to streamline how we're able to scale and do more. And get that velocity that yep. you're looking for yep. and keep those customers happy. Absolutely. All right, a year from now, we're gonna we're gonna be at another airport live. We're gonna do this in a year. You get to choose. Okay. <laughs> uh, it'll be one that has the uh has the uh the readers. There you go. Um you're talking to your infrastructure at lead. What's that conversation look like? What do you want it to look like in a year from now? I can turn this off. <laughs> yeah, can speak He's behind the camera, right behind the camera. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm going to go right down the line yeah. with infrastructure, security, software development. Same question. Yeah. Put up a speed round here because we only got a couple more minutes. Okay. What's that conversation going to be? What do you want? What do you want to? What do you want to be talking about in a year from now on the infrastructure space? That infrastructure is lean enough to support anything that comes up. So if I say I want to build that, I can build the environment using code. I guess it doesn't matter if it's on-prem, doesn't matter if it's in the cloud, I should build the environment using code, tear it down using code. We'd actually monitor the cost in a way where we could say, I know which environment and which type of, of system is the most effective and efficient. Sounds like Nirvana. How close are you to that right now, your assessment? Um, I mean, the full environment might be a little, probably a couple of years from that, but key environments, I think we, we'll, we'll speed up pretty quickly. Security, same conversation. Having a conversation with the CISO, uh, what's that conversation look like a year from now? Uh, we're very secure now. So same security posture, speed to market. And then, you know, we have an ecosystem that where we, we're secure internally and we do provide governance and expertise and, and SMEs to the things we're doing externally. Is that, that, that's somewhat of a different business, but cyber security is cyber security. So we want to make sure we're consistent. And we're doing that well. So we're, we're supporting our customers and securing them uh, and keeping up with business agenda. So no, hey, ATO in a day? Some things can do an ATO in a day. I mean, right. part of that's, you know. But is it speed up the ATO? We got to shrink that down? Uh, or are we good on the timelines that we use for ATOs? No, we're speeding up. We, gotta speed. we definitely <laughs> got to speed up. But, but that's going to be partially consistency in environments, consistency in tech stack. Because if I'm rinsing and repeating, I'm not doing a full security assessment on everything. There I can go. just flip it off. Yeah, reuse yeah. is the key there. Um, I say software development, but just business applications, right? You're talking to the head of business application. I'm not sure exactly how you organize <laughs> there. Maybe we can ask you that yeah, in a minute. But uh, how's that conversation going? What's that look like? In year? So we want to be able to track everything we're doing. Uh, we want to be able to track velocity and track uh, how business value has been uh, been delivered based on our customer. That to me is more of a business conversation than it is about software because software is software that does the right thing. But how are we able to meet the mission the most efficient way? And what do those numbers look like? Because that's going to influence the next contract, it's going to influence the platform, the next team we use. So those are the that's the conversation I'm not talking about. We should be agile, we should have DevOps 
we should have, and the infrastructure guy did his job, so we should be able to move quickly. Now, what's the most efficient? Uh, procurement, what's that conversation? If you're talking to Bill in a year, what are you all talking about? That point? What do you want to be talking about? Hopefully, FAST uh, has evolved to something, you know, it's got to be the most innovative contract in, in DHS. So we'll be doing things that no one else has done, um, be able to procure agile services in, in a new and, and kind of cool way. Uh, the other thing is that what fast is agile services. Agile services. It yeah. other stuff? It's it's just agile services. Okay. I, I think on the on the uh, on the commodity side, infrastructure and, and the commodity side, you just want to have flexibility uh, because those are commodities. We want to make sure we have access to them, meter them, that they're they're best cost. But on the on the uh, software side, when it comes to contracts, we need to be able to to do things well and, and to be innovative because buying agile services is not the easiest thing because you know, is buying sprints better than buying units? Is buying velocity the way to go? So, you know, getting uh, feedback from industry to figure out the best way to buy. Top three priorities over the next six months for you. Just aggregate, you know, yeah. you're hearing from your customers, talking to your employees, yeah. obviously the administrators uh, giving you some direction, headquarters probably trying to give you some help. <laughs> uh, what are your top priorities, top three priorities? Uh, and for six months. Yeah, cyber is cyber's definitely the, the, the top. Uh, cyber. Cyber, big cyber. Cyber for the industry and cyber to make sure we're moving cyber a little bit cleaner internally. Okay. So cyber, yeah. both sides of the that it. point. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say making sure that that uh, cloud migration is, is, you know, kind of moving up on an exponentially, exponentially higher scale. So we're, we're going to, the curve has to go up. Uh, so as we're because as we do that, we'll have more flexibility. And so moving that forward, and, and then I would say the next one is just uh, more and more collaboration, uh, because we're doing so much in so many different areas that we're going to have to keep the pace together. And TSA is like a big mission, it's a big organization. I found that you know most of what I do every day is I'm on the phone on email. I, I talk more in, in about twelve to fourteen hours than I've done in a long time. Really? I'm, I'm talking all day. I get home. I just go to bed. So you're in the <laughs> office. I go in the office three days a week. So what's the remote uh, uh, requirement or posture or policy for TSA? It's similar to most of the agencies. So we're twice a pay period that, that okay. you're required to come in. But folks come in. Like I'll, I'll be in. I'll see folks walking around because we, we're supporting the rest of the agency. Folks are coming in. I, I, I come in three days a week. We have a great gym, too. So I, I like that. So I, I'm, in, I'm in the office a lot. Excellent. 